Woo! Welcome back. The IB Sultan is back, and now I'm sponsored by Starbucks, which clearly means that I've sold out and I'm filthy rich. Today we're going to talk about solving more difficult problems with projectile motion in two dimensions. You need pen, paper, and calculator to solve this problem, uh, and you should be working along. Do not just bask in the glory of uh, my knowledge here. So with this problem, I recommend your first step, please draw a good picture, and then try and solve part A. Pause it. Hopefully your picture is one-third as awesome as mine is, and hopefully you also know that step one is you need to break that initial velocity into components, uh, because we can't do very much with this funny angle. So what you want to say is that initial velocity in the x-direction is going to be your 23 times cosine of 38, and that's going to be about 18.1 meters per second. And the initial vertical velocity is going to use sine, and that's going to be about 14.2 meters per second. Now to find the height, that's going to be this point here. Its horizontal velocity will still be what it's always been, the 18 meters per second. But that vertical velocity is going to have come to zero, because it's just about to start back down. So that makes step two, finding the height when the vertical velocity is equal to zero. At least that's one way to do it. So an equation that worked well for me was to say that v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Now this is all related to stuff only in the vertical direction, which I'm going to call the y. So if I come up here, I am then going to say that this is going to be canceled out because it's zero. And then I can rearrange this to be negative 2as equals u squared. And that's going to become negative 2 times my negative 10 meters per second squared acceleration. So s is going to equal my vertical initial velocity of the 14 point two meters per second, and that is squared. Then it's just a matter of solving for s, and I end up with about 10 meters is the height that it goes. Before you find the horizontal distance, you need to find the time that it's in flight for, and that is going to be a vertical motion situation. Uh, and so, what uh, an equation that worked well for me was this equation here, as long as you consider only vertical stuff. So you put in your initial vertical velocity, your vertical acceleration, and s is going to be zero, because it's going to go up and it's going to come back down with the exact same displacement that it was at. And that makes your life easier when you rearrange this equation this way, because you don't have to do the quadratic formula, because I'm never doing that again. And one of your t's cancels out. And so now you fill in your 14.2 uh, meters per second. You fill in your value for a, that's going to be a negative 10. And you solve for t. And that turns out to be about 2.84 seconds of flight time. Now you are ready to find the horizontal distance. And if you know you're ready for it, and you've done all the other steps, it's easy, because that horizontal distance has no acceleration in the motion. So it's just a simple uh, x velocity multiplied by the time. And so that is a constant x velocity of 18.1 meters per second times our time that we got last time of 2.84 seconds. That's not quite our answer yet, and it gives us about 51 meters. How about that? 